Hello, third grade. I'm back again with Brent. Oh my gosh, we're so close. And so many things happened in our last chapter. Um, He got the baby and then it was going to try to leave. And then the miller had captured someone and pulled her out from the mountains of straw. Do you remember who it was? Red. Oh no. Ugh, I wonder what he's going to do. Okay. Chapter 28. And there are only how many chapters? 32. Oh my gosh, we're almost there, guys. Chapter 28, Grasping at Straws. Red fought against her bindings and gave a muffled scream beneath the gag until she was purple. The miller laughed. Ha <laughs> ha, she's a feisty one, I'll say. Rather impolite. It took both Frederick and Bruno to catch her. They told me she was your only friend in the world. And, well, I suppose if you have only one friend, you might want to keep her in one piece, that is. Frederick and Bruno laughed. <laughs> and Red flailed and struggled against the ropes. Frederick and Bruno stopped laughing and stepped back. Even though she was bound, Red was like a mad beast that might break free at any moment. Boys, said the miller, set our little friend in the corner. Then go find a place to wash. You smell like swine. Swine is another word for a pig. Frederick and Bruno shoved Red into the corner by the fireplace and then left. Now, said the miller, turning to me, do we have a bargain? Red made a muffled growl and shook her head behind Oswald. What did she think I should do? I couldn't let her get hurt. The baby in my arms had been squirming and whimpering all this time, but suddenly he exploded into shrill wails. He sounded like a whole swarm of mad pixies. He's hungry. Let me have him, cried Opal, rushing toward me. But the miller stopped her. Not until he starts spinning. Spinning, spinning, spinning. Red and gold and opal and the baby. I couldn't think with all this wailing. I would have to think while I spun. Take him and feed him, I shouted to opal and sat down at the spinning wheel. My hands shook as I picked up the straw. The spinning wheel vibrated when I put my foot to the treadle like it knew something bad was happening. This was the sort of magic Hadel had warned me about. It was wrong, twisted. I pushed the straw through the wheel and began to spin. Very wise, said Oswald. Now, the king grows impatient. He is eager for his queen to display her talents once again. And as you can see, he's gathered straw all this time just for her to spin. You had three days, remember guys? He walked in and he realized the entire floor, except for a small space, and all the way to the ceiling is straw and he only has three days. Oh my goodness. Whew, that's a lot. Three days, I asked. I can't finish this in three days. In three days, the king will return with his hunting party, said the miller. We have promised him results. Therefore, you will promise to make the gold. Three days. Fail me, and the bargain is off. He smiled malevolently. Malevolently, <laughs> at Red. She glared at him. Anger welled up in me stronger than I had ever felt it before. I wanted to punch him. Punch him in his big red belly and make him explode. And then the anger faded into despair. I was back where I started. Three days would not be the end. I would never stop spinning the straw into gold. Gran had tried to keep me from all this, from the miller and his greed, from my own stupidity. But maybe there was nothing either of us could have done. The miller stepped forward with a length of rope and bound my legs and ankles to the spinning wheel. We wouldn't want you to get lost, he said. Now I couldn't be lost. My name was Rumpel. I was trapped. 
One spool of gold. Red was sitting on the floor. She was dirtier than I'd ever seen her. She had scratches and cuts and dirt on her face was streaked as though she had been crying. Red? Crying? Strong, fierce, fearless, red, crying? I hated to imagine it. Two spools of gold. Opal sat in a pile of straw feeding her baby. She was crying too. When she finished, the miller made her put Archie in a basket next to me and told her to back away to remind us both that he was mine. Some grandfather. Three spools of gold. Four. The miller, miller gathered the gold as I spun it draping it around his neck and waist and laughing the whole time. Finally, after he was more tangled in gold than red was in rope, he slumped down and his head began to nod. He was feeling hopeful. If he fell asleep, if he fell asleep, I could untie red and we could make a run for it. But then I remembered Archie. Even if I could free myself, I would have to take the baby and Opal would start shrieking. And that would be that but I wanted to at least talk to Red. Opal, I said after the miller started snoring, ungag Red. Opal looked at me as if I had insulted her. I tried to sound more submissive and pleading. Your Highness, please take off Red's gag. No, she said sharply. I'm the queen and you don't give me orders. She's a mean creature. She always pulled my hair when I was a girl. Evil, that's what she is. Red is evil. Red gave Opal a look that could certainly be called evil. And Opal cowered and then lashed out at me. And so are you, you little demon baby stealer. She began to wail. Oh, make it stop. I couldn't think. I needed Red's brains right now. Mine were just too scrambled. Opal, your majesty, if you let me her speak to me, I may be able to tell you a way that you can keep your baby. It was a hollow promise, but I knew it would work for now. Opal stopped crying and her eyes widened. My, my baby? You'll give him back for good? I can tell you how it might be possible if you take off Red's gag. Opal obeyed, and as soon as she did, Red let out a slew of bad words that I didn't think appropriate for infant ears. The baby didn't either because he started crying and the miller began to stir in his sleep. Quickly, Opal picked up Archie and rocked and soothed him, which soothed the miller, sleeping miller as well. I have to admit, seeing Opal cuddle and whisper to her baby was very sweet. It made my heart pinch and swell all at once. I really didn't want to take her baby. Rock you! Idiot, said Red in a harsh whisper. Why did you come back? I didn't want to, I said, spinning the straw. Frederick and Bruno found me and kidnapped me, and I almost got away until a gnome found me and announced the birth of Opal's baby. Then I had to come. Did you know that magic can force you to do something you don't want to do? Magic will make you do anything you bound yourself to, said Red. Why do you think the witches don't like to get involved in anything? You're in a tangle rump since birth, he thought. Well, what about you? Unless I spin this gold, you're going to die. And what do you think they will do with me? And what do you think they will do with you? Make you Lord of the Pixies? Oh, please, rump. You're the one who's going to die if you don't stop. I can't, Red, I can't, in a whisper. I quickly told her what I had learned about my aunts, my mother, and my name. Her eyes widened as I spoke. And when I finished, all she managed to say was, oh, the things I'd said hung in the air for a heavy moment. This is my destiny, Red. I don't have any choice. That's not true, Rump. You do have a choice. I started to feel irritated. I don't have a choice, Red, unless I choose to let the miller hurt you, maybe even kill you or kill me. Do you want me to make that choice? No, Rump, but that's not what I... The miller snorted and I sat up abruptly, looking dazed and confused. What? What? What are you? Red whispered frantically to me. Your name, Rump. There has to be more than that. Your mother wouldn't have done that. You think you know so much. There isn't more. My destiny is this. 
The miller came to his senses. He grabbed a handful of Red's hair and she growled and struggled against him. Rump, this isn't your destiny. You're not. The miller fastened the gag over her mouth again and threw her against a pile of straw so forcefully that the heat fell over on her head and buried up to her chest. Oswald glowered at her and she glowered back. Then he walked slowly over to me. I concentrated on spinning, hunched low as I fed the straw into the wheel. Whirr, 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 another spool. A little pile had formed at my feet. The miller's massive shadow fell over me. It smelled like rotten meat and sour. Mm, worse than a troll's breath. Do something like that again, and I'll put your little friend in a haystack and set it on fire. His hand came down across my face and knocked me back from the wheel. Straw flew everywhere, like thick golden rain. Get up, you will not stop until every last bit of straw is gold. He turned to Opal, who was clutching her baby, protecting him from her father's fury. You put that thing back in the basket. It doesn't belong to you. Opal obeyed and I obeyed. obeyed. I spun in silence for many hours. The afternoon sun burned through the window, making the spools of gold glow red. I had a good high stack, but I didn't think I had put a dent in the straw. I would have to spin through the night if I was to finish in three days. And one of the days was nearly gone. I was already exhausted. When the sun was low in the sky, Frederick and Bruno took me outside so I could relieve myself of nature's call. They stood right by me, their hands on big knives at their waists reminding me that I was trapped. <clears throat> At least the cold air revived me a little and I could think more clearly. I forced my brain not to think about my destiny or myself. I thought only of getting red out of this mess. Whatever problems I had, she didn't deserve to be tangled up in them. I would get her free and then I'd deal with everything else. Back in the castle, the miller tied me to the wheel again and stood over me as I spun. Whenever I filled the bobbin, he quickly removed the skein and added it to the growing pile of gold. Opal had scooted as near to Archie as she dared, looking back between her father and me. She drew her legs up to her chest and wrapped her arms tightly around her shins and rocked back and forth. In a rhythm to my spinning, she rocked so vigorously that the floorboards beneath her began to creak. By, night, the the, by nightfall, the boards lifted each time she rocked back and forth. <clears throat> and then cracked down as she came forward. Creak, snap, creak, snap. Red stared at me as I spun, a look of hard determination on her face. I shrugged helplessly as she rolled her eyes and sank back into the straw. I didn't dare talk. My face still burned from the miller's hand, but questions tumbled around in my head. A thousand little birds pecking at my brains. Red said I hadn't found all of my name, but how did that help me? Even if it was true, I was no closer to finding out the rest. And besides, Rumple made sense. Trapped, trapped, Wrapped. Eventually, the miller fell asleep in a pile of straw, and the moment he did, Opal crept over to me with desperation in her eyes. You said you would tell me how I could keep my baby. Tell me now. I stared at her. I had nearly forgotten about our agreement, but Opal had been waiting all this time for the miller to fall asleep so she could ask. Her eyes were red and puffy, and her face was wet with tears. Her chin trembled, and before I could say anything, she started crying again. Stop, stop, Opal. I mean, your majesty, there is a way that you can keep your baby. Stop crying. She stopped crying, and I sighed with relief. Tell me, said Opal as she wiped her nose on her sleeve. I racked my brain wildly and looked at Red, but she just shook her head at me. We both knew there was no way but i had to tell opal something anything i had to give her an impossible task you must tell me my name i said your name she asked 
Yes, my true name, all of it. If you guess my name before I'm done spinning this gold, you can keep your baby. But your name is Robert, she said. Or no, it's Butt. Frederick and Bruno always called you Butt. My name has never been Robert or Butt, I said impatiently. You have to guess my real name. This reminds you of the story, you guys, the, the real story of Rumpelstiltskin or the fairy tale of Rumpelstiltskin. She has to guess his name. <clears throat> and if I do, you'll give me back Archie? I nodded. I knew I was secure in this bargain. She would never guess my name. I didn't even have a real name, only a curse. I promise. Opal took a deep, shuddering breath. I can speak to the king's wise men and search all the name books. Whatever kept her busy and wail free. She went off looking much lighter, but my burden was still heavy and my legs and back already ached. I was in a sea of gold now, a filthy gold ocean. Later, Opal strolled into the room with a list of names written on a long scroll. Is your name Gaspar or Melchor or Balthazar? Those are very rare names. Is it one of those? I stared at her in disbelief. Rump, I said. My name has always started with Rump. But that can't be your real name. It's only part of my name. She only looked confused and stared down her parchment. Is it Nakamikonezar? I stopped my spinning and stared at her. Was she serious? My sympathy for Opal was fading with the thickness of her skull. That is not my name. Oh, was all she said. And she turned away, sighing all the work she had wasted. <sighs> Opal stared blankly, blank, blankly at the parchment a bit longer, then stretched out and fell asleep on the straw, her arms reaching toward her sleeping baby. As soon as Opal fell asleep, the miller snorted awake, rubbed his eyes, and grinned at all the gold. He took a large sack and began filling it with gold. That's good, he said, looking at the gold, not me. Plenty for all. He stuffed the sack to the brim and then staggered out of the room with a bulging sack flung over his shoulder. The first day was gone, and though the pile of gold grew above my head, the straw still loomed like a mountain. A few pixies crawled through the cracks in the floor, Floorboards, all the golden magic must have wakened them from their winter sleep. They danced and chirped around me and the spinning wheel for a minute and then nestled in the coils of the gold and fell asleep. Buzzards, how I longed to join them. And that's the end of the chapter. Next week will be chapter 29, guessing games for finding names. I miss you all so much. I hope you're still reading every day and I will see you next week. Bye, everybody.